Welcome to another episode of Victoria's Lounge from Sankara Hotel. Now today we're talking about slay queens. Yes, often the term has been connected to negative connotations. But today we want to look at it through the lens of gender stereotypes and what that means for women in Kenyan society. So let's not take too much time. Let's jump right into the discussion. But first, meet my guests. Dr. Bitange Ndemo is an associate professor of entrepreneurship at the University of Nairobi's Business School. The former ICT permanent secretary had a rather interesting take on slay queens in a recent column that appeared on the Business Daily. Shafiweru is known as Kenya's radio bad boy, MC, businessman and father. Today, the turn-up king is in the lounge to school us on Slay Queens. Stay tuned. Dr. Njoki Ngumi is a gypsy general practitioner, writer, filmmaker and member of the Nest Collective. She also does learning and development for Heva Fund. But tonight, she's ready to slay on matters gender stereotypes. All right, so let's get the conversation started. Uh, slay queen, a very common term, especially now among the uh, younger generation. Dr. Ndemo wrote a column, uh, basically to flip that whole idea on its head, uh, that, okay, we use it usually to devalue women, um, but it opens up a wider conversation on gender stereotypes, especially here in Kenya. But what was your thought process when writing this column, Dr. Ndemo? Um, I spent quite a bit of time uh, around Christmas watching uh, comedians and Slay Queen was one of the most popular topic uh, which I thought people misunderstood completely. Mm -hmm. um, there's a tendency in this country, you pick up uh, something before you understand it right. and then you have different people with different understanding and uh, I decided to do a very small sample asking people what they thought about Slay Queen. Um, I don't think any, they had a common definition, but uh, the definitions they had um, were more like uh, stereotyping women, uh, women with long hair, women with long nails. Um, and I thought it, this is the worst thing we can do in 2018 uh, to continue to demean women, sexualize women. Um, that was what was going on through my mind. And then I said, maybe I should write and see whether we can correct the term or people begin to understand. Um, even I didn't know what it meant mm -hmm. until I started looking around uh, only to find that uh, it started not as a negative term, uh, but we in Kenya picked it and uh, flipped it upside down and we are now using it in a very negative way. Uh, Dr. Ngumi, so what do you make of that slay queen term? We're just finding new ways to practice misogyny. There's nothing, there's nothing new about the misogynistic context in which um, Kenyan women have to live and kind of work out their lives. Um, I think it's also profoundly ironic that um, we tell women that all they are is useful if they're beautiful, like where they're going to find their use is in beauty. And then when somebody is actually young and beautiful and showcasing both the youth and beauty, we find an insulting way in which to reference to that while in general everything in the world is sold using a young and beautiful woman draped upon it. You drape a young and beautiful woman on toothpaste, you drape a young and beautiful woman on an AK-47, you drape a young and beautiful woman on a Ferrari. Um, and it can be anything. You have to use young and beautiful mothers to sell diapers. You know, it can't be the baby alone, right? And so this thing where I think, I think the thing that we're trying to work out is our ambivalence around um, the power that a woman can have by being young and beautiful. And I want to link that to another thought that Dr. Ndemo shared in his article, which was about um, ambition. Because the thing that people will constantly tie to this young, beautiful, urban-oriented, upwardly mobile person that is described wholesale as the slay queen. And I had slay king recently. Yes. You know, because, I mean, the men have not escaped. So if the men think they've escaped, <laughs> they've not. Um, the thing that they constantly apply to this person is that they use these qualities, the youth, the beauty, the upward mobility, and this kind of uh, raw ambition to want to be able to socially climb. And that's a thing for whatever reason that we're supposed to 
um, to look down upon, and that's the thing that we're supposed to demean, when the entire country is currently in the business of trying to figure out how to socially climb. And so I don't know why it takes on this odd flavor yeah. um, when, when, when young and beautiful people are doing it, or people who either look like they're trying hard to be beautiful or are kind of on this journey to do what, again, is called the glow up, where you want to look as best as you can so that you can achieve the most that you want. And again, maybe my final thought would be that um, it's because youth and beauty are, are sexualized quantities or eroticized quantities. And so somebody who is young and beautiful is obviously assumed to be using those quantities in a sexual manner for gain. And somebody in the audience had earlier talked when we were kind of touching base about the word, right. about how somebody sleeps their way to the top, mm -hmm. which again is a thing that people usually ascribe to women. Right. Um, as for whether or not it happens, the problematics of those are something else entirely about the trade of sex for something. And people have been trading sex ever since the world began. So that, again, is not new. But I think all of the ambivalent thoughts around the moralities of some of these things and should people even feel the right to be attractive, as attractive as they possibly can be in a public space. And especially when you think about women yeah. and the ways in which we don't want them to be public beings in this country yeah. and public powerful beings. That's why we have to limit the ways in which they express themselves using demeaning terms like yeah. slay queen. Yeah, and, and Shafi, I mean, is it really used to demean women? Of course, um, we've heard Dr. Ngumi talk about um, the social climb of women whether it is seen as morally right or wrong. Um, and misogyny has been with us for centuries. Women have been put down for a very long, long time. Um, is the term replacing just terms you've used for women, gold digger to socialite to now slay queen, is it more or less the same thing? Well, it's just an upgrade and uh, we'll have a new one this year. Yeah. This year now, when you call someone a girl child, it'll be an insult. I give it to you by June. <laughs> give it a couple of months. By the time you'll be telling someone, you, uh, the, you'll be finding um, your sister, your colleague at work, your female colleagues, and you try and call them that, and that will become an insult because that's where it's headed. And that's what happens in Kenya. We are living in a society that is uh, very, very judgy. We live in a society that is very peculiar. We live in a society that is um, just f full of a lot of negative vibe. Eh? Because look at it this way. It's a good thing. It started as a good thing like uh, the king slayer these are warriors this is uh, like in the medieval times if you watch uh, game of thrones mm -hmm. uh, these are the, uh, the knights and uh, these are guys who are knighted by the queen so you can imagine yeah uh, queen itself as a word is also dope it's, it means royalty uh, if anyone called you their queen it'd be something to you know smile right, right. and be proud be about proud. but uh come back to the 254 and the society we're living in right now with all the negative vibe and the negative energy that is out there, they take any good thing and just flip it around and just, you know, and um, brand it to be something really like messed up. The young people picked it up from the um, reality shows in the States, uh, Housewives of Atlanta, you know, all these many, many reality shows that have built women who are respectable celebrities right. in their own stature. Right. Yes, they did not, were not born in money, but they became famous, they became important. And from the reality shows, you get these ladies who are, you know, now they dress well, like she said, you know, you have long hair. Eh? Why would anyone judge you for trying to look dope? Mm -hmm, you exactly. get my point? And then because you're trying to look dope and you're doing something in a certain way because you wear a short skirt or you wear makeup or you have a phone, uh, an expensive phone, and you don't have a job, they now brand you a slay queen. Right. Yes. So Slay Queen has just replaced all the other words that were there before. As you said, it started with Gold Digger. It came to Side Cheek. And then now, <laughs> it's, it's Slay Queen. Actually, the end of uh, the better half of uh, last year, it became Slay Queen. Yeah. And then the comedians, as uh, the professor says, took it and became, started making fun of it, started mocking it. So, I mean, as much as it has taken on negative connotations, can we be honest? The people who use it the most, which is the younger generation, um, don't they aspire to be like those women? Um, and I want you to just kind of get that, because that also, too, is that's why you have so many of these young women who don't mind having the long hair and the nails um, and living beyond their means because they want to live that lifestyle. I just want to get a take from, from the audience. I think it's just a connotation that is taking the wrong course. I would be wearing long and fake hair 
long nails. But still, um, I respect the sanctity of womanhood. And it doesn't mean that I am doing this for the wrong purposes. So you don't need to brand me a slay queen because I'm wearing long hair or doing whatever the slay queens nowadays are doing. So do you find a lot of young women have embraced the term? At times I look at social media, especially Facebook, Instagram. You see young people, especially somebody's in first year, and she starts to dress in a way she calls herself a slay queen. It's like they admire, but they don't know what exactly they're admiring. That's the problem. Because they're admiring the outward look. While as, as we term them as slay queens, we have this at the back of our minds that they have malicious acts. But these girls, the young generation, they look at these ladies and they admire the, the figure. It's this <coughs> idea of malicious acts because yes. it is a profoundly... It's an assumption It's that like so deeply judgmental <laughs> <laughs> to look at a picture of somebody... And assume that... that, that, that no. Can you imagine, yeah. like, if I look at Shafi on his Instagram, or he looks at me, and, and then like, he thinks he knows my life, yeah. or I think I know his life, do I know what's going on in his heart <coughs> right now? Do I know his spirit? Do I know anything that... You know, because a girl has a weave, for instance, can I judge her life, her ambitions? Can I say that she doesn't have a high IQ because this one over here has long candy pink nails? Or because you, for instance, are wearing this gorgeous um, fuchsia, high heels. Can I say that I know <laughs> something about you? Can I say that you're vain? Because I've seen a picture of you in heels that you like and you think you like the way you look in them and you want to share the picture. And, yeah, and, 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 like, and like the fact yes. about the followers is that like, you will have more followers yeah. if you... If you, if you, you look nice that, that and you look You good. take careful pictures. So it brings up this whole question of then if the slay queen idea, is yeah. it something substantive or something superficial? If we're not going to come from that judgmental end of how did she get to where she is and look the way she does. Dr. Ndemo, I don't know how you can... I, I think I want the, the young people to, to describe to us what it means when someone says she looks good. Uh, when you say someone looks good, it doesn't mean that he or she has to wear something which is very expensive. It all begins with, even if it's a cloth what, 200 bob, and then you have well ironed it, you have worn it properly, that is what it, it means, you look good. Um, I think we, our culture is uh, messed up with the Western culture. Uh, when I grew up, Women used to breastfeed kids in church, mm. and nobody looked at the, their chest. Why is it an issue if you want to wear a V top? Ask Why is that it an issue? question. Why is it an issue? You know, the, the young people Can we understand. take a break before That's we answer that question? <laughs> <laughs> You're watching Victoria's yeah. Lounge's conversation on Slate Queens continues. Stay with us. All right, so this seems to have taken a turn now into the moral aspect of this term uh, and why it is such an issue and why we make it so negative. Kenyans uh, need to understand one thing. Yes. Breasts and mammary gra uh, glands. Mm -hmm. that it's nothing, it has nothing to do with the, it's not sexual. How it turned to become sexual, I don't get it. That's why in Turkana, you, the ladies in Turkana, they just walk. the ladies in the, from the, semi-arid areas yes. that walk with their bare chest and no one would judge them. No one would speak and about it. No, no man, no man. We'll would even dare them. would look at it because it's a mammary <laughs> gland. It's the way we've been socialized though. For me where it reaches is that somebody will imagine that if you are showing your breasts, I'm showing it to you, you are inviting huh? my consumption. You're sending a message. Breasts. No, I can show not. my breasts if I want because mm -hmm. I want because they are mine. Right. And that's the only, and that's the <laughs> only, <laughs> that's but the it's only reason. Luffy, now you're doing that in that African that. It's very unfortunate. Where we say it's very, we're, listen, we're conservative, listen, but yet we have like the women in it, Turkana who yeah, walk very interested without an issue. It's unfortunate that the young people, have you heard what she just said? She just said, <laughs> try, try that, that in Nairobi. Nairobi. Why would you do that? Why do you Actually, accept? Let me get your take on, why uh, would you say that? Why would you accept yeah. to be boxed? I'm saying that because personally I've seen a woman being undressed. Because she wore something that was showing some, some of her body parts. Okay, and because we want so, to fight that, so you're going to be afraid and you're going to stay in your box. And then what are, you, what are you doing about it? 
Well, because those gender yeah. stereotypes are connected to let, what? When a let, woman is scantily clad, what do, what message does that send in our society? So, so Which, I, again, I, I, going I'll, back to the gender stereotypes. Yeah, I, I think it's like your people. People imagine that if you're if you're dressed in a manner that mm -hmm. it's showing skin that they think is too much. Because again, scantily dressed is a subjective judgment. Right. You might wear a dress, and I don't think you're scantily dressed, but yeah. somebody yeah. else. Yeah. Okay, okay. Doctor Demo. Yeah. Yes. Um, there are so many men, and I don't have to name which ethnic group. They just come to the city with just yeah, without worse than boxes the, what you're talking about, yeah. women. Why are they undressed? Yes, yes, why? I have an answer for that. Okay. Yes. Since the times of Jesus, yeah. men are... I mean, women are always being put down. Mm -hmm. you remember, I referred to the Bible story where, Jesus, where, where these two, two people, a woman and a man, were found committing adultery. And what happened? The woman, the the woman, woman was, was put down. You know, she was the one who was brought to Jesus because that, that society is so judgmental towards women. A woman is not safe in this society. So that is the what truth. What are you doing to change this? I feel like that's not a fair question to ask her um, because all of us, <laughs> it's not, it's not because we all find ourselves um, in this context. Like, in fact, if anything, if we really want to be unfair, I want to ask these three men over here, what have you done to ensure yeah, that women are safe? My dress, my In choice. your life. They started in my your life, what have you done to make sure that everyone is safe? Well. You and then you do things like and you do things like this even without thinking. You have a girlfriend, you walk her to the bus stop. If you can, you'll make sure you drive her to a gate, you will stand at the gate until she gets in because there are all these ideas about but the ways in which a woman's body is unsafe. Why Dr. Demo, do you feel that there's a general low regard for women, regardless of what she looks like, how she dresses, and what she ascribes to? Generally I, in our society. I, I actually think um, men are fighting back in this country. Um, after we started uh, the promotion of the girl child mm -hmm. and uh, the fact that uh, the KCSE exams this year mm -hmm. showed that women are doing so well, uh, better than men, uh, shouldn't we begin to respect women uh, for what they have done under the circumstances? Well, which circumstances? Right. Can the circ under the circumstances this, yeah. which... Uh, they are discriminated from left, right, center, um, but still they are able to go through all this and still perform better than men. Well, listen, women have been bullied. Women have been discriminated upon. Why? Because men are weak. Women are very strong. This is coming from Shafi. Listen, Shafi's words. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. That's why women can take it. And uh, the fact that they can take it, and now it's become boring. The truth of the matter is, it's at high time that the boy child wakes up and realizes that you're... Eh? Would you, after your undergraduate, would you marry a PhD woman? Yes, why not? Would, let, me, let me rephrase the question. <laughs> would, you, would you marry a lady who makes more money than you? Yeah. Of course, yes, I would. You guys are young. You have no idea. Yeah. It's That's very complicated. Anyone else? For me, I cannot marry that woman. Thank you. It's very good to be honest. It's okay. It's fine. Okay. Why? Do, could, you, could, you, could you tell us why? Because that would be interesting to hear. Because, you know, uh, if you look at the African society, actually, a man is the self provider in the family. Okay. But in case now, your wife is earning more than you earn, mm. that in African society tells that now you, man, you become inferior. You're weak. Okay. You're weak. So to avoid uh, that uh, uh, issue, you marry your class. Thank you, you're lame. Yeah. This, this, this is a very, can, I love it. You've said the most important I thing. I love it. Yeah, marry your because class, because class marry your class. Yeah. yeah, yeah you marry yeah. your class. If you know like uh, you're, uh, you're, you're holding a degree in any course that you have, marry a woman who all the same or maybe a diploma. Or below you. Yes. <laughs> or the certificate. But then, okay, can certificate I ask why matter? below? Is it because you feel you need to dominate? You can't have... It's standard. Not that, uh, uh, not that we feel we, we are supposed to dominate. That is not an issue. The it's issue nature. is you have to take up the responsibility as a man. And uh, I'm sorry to say this. Sometimes uh, if women are superior than men, sometimes they tend to misbehave. And we're trying to avoid that. Okay. Wait, um, I, I, I oh, wait, 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 because now. No, 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 so, so, my, so, my, so first of all, um, we've had, we've had men in dominance and, uh, and agree, ag agree to disagree. Um, there's been proof of the misbehavior of men 
through millennia. So it's not a matter of having power means, it's not a matter of the gender that has power. It's a, it's a matter of how we handle power when we have it. But let's, I mean, let's, let's not be facetious. I do want to um, address <coughs> what you've said about class, um, which, is, which is really interesting for me because I think um, class angst and class, um, class what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Class anxiety um, is really the thing that's fueling this the nonsense drama. around slay queens. Because the thing that people um, imagine is that women, you can be born in a certain way, but if you dress a certain way, if you, if you access spaces that are for classes that are above you, it means you will access resources that you should not have otherwise accessed if you are just where you are. And so that, that idea of, um, as a woman, I can wear um, a, a dress, and a pair of heels, and if I look nice enough, they might even let me into a club where I would otherwise have had to pay 3,000 shillings to enter. I will enter there, somebody will buy me a drink because they like how I look, then they will, they will take me on a date, I'll go somewhere, Shafi will take me on a date because he likes how I look. Three seconds later, I, I, am, I am Shafi's partner because Shafi has made a decision, but then everybody else who's watching is like, wait, she has to act for that money, it's not hers, mm -hmm. she... So that's she's the, fake. So she's she. It's not. It's not really hard. So that's the sort of thing that we that, that people are, are 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 negotiating with. I think also that. to be fair, really, the thing really, the thing really that we're really afraid of yeah. when we talk about and it, this cuts across gender, even though mostly resources again are gendered. So we expect them to flow from men to women. Thank but you. But again, at the end of the day, the minute we have a very large class disparity in a context where we're trying to establish a relationship. The thing that we're afraid of, and that's the thing that we should be talking about, not the logistics and the nonsense and who's account and is who's. The thing we are really afraid of is that the person who is resourced will use their power against us, regardless of who the person is. So for when he says that um, African, African men are, we've, 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 we've said that men are supposed to be the ones who are. So men cannot... As a man, for him, he doesn't want a situation where there's a woman who can use her resources against him. Women, on the other hand, have had to live in situations where resources are used against them all the time. Somebody will marry you, then they will leave you, they will leave you with nothing, and then go and uh, give shared wealth to their new partner. But you, you have to chase them for Or they'll support. blackmail you. Or the, things like they'll that. They'll blackmail you so all through. This is the thing. And so that's why when people now accuse women of being scammers, of being gold diggers, it's because they don't think that romance and the generosity of your partner is enough for you to be able to access their resources, that the resources are not yours. You see, so those are all separate things that come into this kind of general angst we have when discussing slay queens. I, I, I think this is very important. I mean, I have students all the time, and this question I've asked, and uh, almost one out of 50 who could attempt to get a woman earning more or with higher education. But I have also talked to so many young ladies who wouldn't take their master's degree mm -hmm. because they want to get married first mm -hmm. uh, for fear that if I went higher than this, my options would be much limited. Mm -hmm. So it's actually a very important topic that we are discussing here. But it brings but, it down to the, it boils down yeah. to the issue of the judgy society we live in. Right. Our society is so negative, anything dope, anything good will be judged. It doesn't matter, it has nothing to do with gender. It's the same way if um, I bought a new Range Rover today. My complex where I live, the guys don't know where I got the money. They start like, hey, we want to use the drugs. You know, that's, that's just how we were, we were brought up. And until the day, eh, we appreciate and celebrate people's wealth, people's well-being, people's and success. just success, success and life. That's the day we'll be able to come uh, sort out all these issues that we are facing. Yeah, yeah. It's so because like the lady, yeah. the lady yeah. doesn't want to do a master's because she's like, yo, I do that master's, I go back to my house, I'll be beaten by this master's yeah. because you know what? Your, your husband, will start, your, the person who loved you so much, mm. who paid for that master's, will start accusing you of sleeping with your master's uh, mm -hmm. clique. Your yeah. lecturers. And it happens. Or even beyond that, the woman saying, I can't because I can't find a husband. So mm. she's considering marriage above her mm -hmm. education. Yes, and you can imagine, it's the so moment she gets married, that, that story okay. dies. Yeah. So yeah. she will never proceed. What? And that is a society that we live in right now. Hold the that thought. We need to take a quick, quick break. Dr. Ngumi, we're coming to you. Stay with us.
All right, welcome back. We're talking about <coughs> snake queens, gender stereotypes, and basically dismantling these gender stereotypes and expectations that uh, we have in society. Dr. Ngumi, before we went to break, you had something you wanted to say. Right. Um, I wanted to say that there was a very high-ranking um, official in Maendeleo Wanawake recently who said that um, for a marriage to be successful, women have to leave their positions, their degrees, whatever it is at the door, and you enter the house just as a woman so that now your marriage will not suffer. When you go home. When, when you, you go, go home, mm -hmm. right. So that, so that now you, you leave behind anything that yeah. might actually give you that enough will, power to, that will hinder. to have parity with this man. Yeah. I, I'm, not, I'm just going to ignore Shafi <laughs> using the word hinder. <laughs> but, but, like, but like, yeah, like you, you leave behind everything that will give you parity with, with this man. Leave it so that you can go into the house and be a woman. Whatever the, whatever the man needs that woman to be, you need to become that person. Because apparently as a woman, you can't be all things. You cannot be a doctor, you can't be a scholar, you can't be a lawyer as well as a wife and a mother when we celebrate men for being the same things. So nobody asks men to leave there. Nobody will ask of professor, leave, leave your teaching at the door. Just enter the house and just be, just be a father, just be a husband. And so like this interesting um, ideas about the ways in which we perceive women who have power are all about fear that when they have options, they will not choose us. So when we look at patriarchy and this construct that allows us to consistently um, almost 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 um, what's the word I'm looking for um, sustainably value men above the ways in which we value women then we need to see that if we build men's value on the fact that women have to be devalued for them to have value we are always going to have a problem so Dr. Ndemo how do we move past that just <coughs> what Dr. Ngumi was I, I have done a number of articles around our culture we must begin to dismantle it and get into culture 2.0. I mean, there is so much um, discourse around you. You saw what happened in the US. Uh, it took the women so long to come out and say the abuses they have taken for many years. And the society came out and supported them. That's how these men began to resign. Um, we need proper discourse on our culture. What are the good things about our culture? Uh, what are the bad things? What should we abandon? And what should we embrace? Or what are new things we can borrow from other places to ensure that we have given equal opportunities yeah. uh, to both men and women? I mean, besides all this, these are your daughters, your sisters, your mother. Um, but when it, it becomes that you are the one to make the decision, um, you want to alienate. You've seen even the Constitution, which <coughs> is very clear on, on the assets, uh, still there is debate. People didn't read that uh, fathers are supposed to give equal uh, pieces of land as they give to men. It would not happen in certain cultures until our mind uh, begins to be to be changed and and that's why in one of the articles I said uh, this rural rural issue um, we must have a home at, uh, in the rural area uh, this is where I belong this is where I'll be buried uh, that is the beginning of discrimination yeah, yeah. Um, we need to begin for us to to live besides what we're discussing here uh, going forward Urbanization is the key, uh, meaning that this attachment to, to social, cultural, rural, whatever, um, we remove it and we would be like anybody else. How do you so it's all about evolution. The, the young, yeah. Exactly. It's, it's about changing times. How changing do we times change? And we have to live in the 21st <coughs> century. Yeah. And as for the women, they need to understand one thing. Yes, you got a road deal, but that was then. This is now. Like even Dr. Isu, she's very abrasive because she's always <laughs> had something. She's always fighting something because she's ready for anything. And that's how our women are brought up. But women need to understand that now they're winning. Eh? We are at par. Eh? Let's now move together. And that's why me, I, me, I encourage, like when I'm dating, if I have a girlfriend, I have two daughters. Mm. Eh? And I, I encourage my daughters, even when they're going out with their friends and everything, pay for your own stuff. Do you. If someone takes it the wrong way, that's their own problem. They will call you whatever they want to call you. They will say you're, you know, you're spoiled. But you know, we need to have, live that Dutch lifestyle 
where men are brought here, they meet the women halfway, and everyone will be cool. I agree with Shafi, except <coughs> for the part where he says women and men are now at par. We are not yet at par. A few weeks ago, when a fellow woman told me that um, if I, I should not drive a car before I am married, because if I drive <laughs> a car, I, w I won't get someone to marry me. And I found it very weird that... No, you find someone with three cars, it's fine. It's 20 <laughs> Or marry your car. <laughs> No, but that, like, like, are you seeing the, 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 the link between this and even the statement that Prof was making yeah, about yeah, yeah, yeah. So one of the things that people are always trying to inculcate in women is a fear of not being passionate. Yeah. But you see, women, you need to understand one thing. Like when you go, I'm sure you, when you go to like, uh, like in December, when you went uh, back home or you're chilling with your aunties, what are those questions they ask you? When are you, you getting you married? Down? Have you settled when down? Where is he? Coming? You see, yeah. when, you, when you tolerate such questions, now it becomes an insult later, like what you just got. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. When you check in with the car, they're like, Hi, yeah, I'm in Nuagari. Who you are The sad thing is, women, we are the one fighting each other. We are the one to point at someone and say she's a straight queen because she has something that you don't have. You know? So even if the men who want to appreciate her, they want to hear how my sister view me and how Vicky, you view me as a woman. So it's about us women first be able to appreciate us and our success for even to teach the other woman to appreciate each other for men also to see this. I think the thing we've internalized, I guess, because of the constant news, the macroeconomic context in which there's no money for anything. So you look at the newspaper, they will never open a newspaper and find a headline saying, we have enough money for universal health care. Relax, Kenyans, we are fine. Or we have enough money to make a train across the entire, we are fine. We will always open and find money was stolen, money has disappeared, we are borrowing. So we've internalized this resource lack that's happening here, it's happening in our lives, such that when Victoria comes and says, look, I got a new pair of shoes, here is the picture. Like, everybody now comes and decides, she's a sex worker. How is it possible? Like, and, it, like, and, and the jumps are... There's a Swahili phrase that goes, Aduyo manamke in manamke mwenzake. When you're a woman, you can grow fast in business when you're holding the hand of a man. And like when you're two women and you're, you're in business, I mean, there's a lot of issues you're going to have in between, but that would be a very successful combination. But that is what we don't want to embrace. We don't want to see our fellow woman grow and leave us behind or below them where we really want to be as well. So it's all about embracing change, all of us, and supporting each other. I want to say that women are strong. It doesn't matter if they, if, even if they might lack the, 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 the energy, muscle. the muscle, that is. But upstairs, I know they're very fine. So whatever thing that you want to achieve in life, you go for it. In as much as culture is bringing you down and telling you one thing you need to do and the other one they don't need to do, when you're focused, do what you want to do, and that's all. Okay, I just want to get my panel. As much as this is very idealistic, in terms of let's work together, we're equals. That's not the general sense in Kenyan society, Dr. Ndemo. And I just want you to speak to the dangers of if we continue with these gender stereotypes, where could we end up? We go back to, again, where we were. Um, a lot of progress has been made. Um, women weren't supposed to go to school. My, my mother never went to school because uh, they, they didn't allow them to go to school. Um, uh, my daughter, I want her to do the best in what they're trying to do. But if society keeps on reversing the gains, um, we don't eventually get there. There is a big lie that has been told about women, and we are accepting the lie that they are a weaker, a weaker sex, we can sexualize them, we can do whatever. Um, I think it's a point that many of you who are saying that we live good, uh, and you are seated inside where a comedian is dismantling or belittling women, you should be the first one to boo. But if you look at those comedy, women were laughing, uh, men were laughing, enjoying the 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 demonization of women. I think we, we must wake up and ask ourselves um, why is it happening and begin to change. Um, usually comedians like leaders are made by the followers. If the followers did something, they wouldn't say it again. So 
we have a war to fight. Um, every time uh, someone speaks something that is not in general as human beings, is good to react immediately so that they begin to think that this is wrong. I'm doing something wrong. And I would hope that uh, because we have so many women now with good education that you can be able to pick up such and in such fora you can be able to react instantly. Uh, you wouldn't hear it again if there was a reaction like that. My final statement is that we have to keep having these uncomfortable conversations. They are difficult. We hear things that each other are saying that we don't necessarily agree with. This person says this, Shafi says this, you discover that you're actually saying the same thing, but both of you are so... And so we just need to kind of be patient um, and allow these conversations to, to unfold. And I guess um, in as far as slay queens, let's accept that we like beautiful people. We like beautiful people wearing beautiful things. Let's accept that sex and erotic conversations are not things that we are used to doing, so they make us uncomfortable. So the easiest thing to do is just to throw mud at everything, as opposed to just kind of respecting uh, these women for what they're doing, which is kind of putting themselves out there, uh, building followings that then translate into income, um, making themselves meet, building new networks for themselves. All of the things that what we call slay queens are doing are exactly the same things that men in venture capital are doing, that people who are entrepreneurs are doing. It's just that this one is wearing a skirt and heels and has dagger-shaped nails that are colored the color of candy. And now we have a problem. Everything has been said, but um, I fear, and my fear is very simple, because the convo can be had. Maybe with us today, yeah. tomorrow, someone else, another station, another panel. But the truth of the matter is you can't have the convo and then we have comedians, like mm. Professor says, making fun of the same thing that we're trying to like, you know, get away from because it's taken us such a long time to get where we are and we can't sit down and just see people demean women and we're cool with it. And that culture just needs just to die. For all the ladies who are out there who are watching the show, who, are, who feel demeaned when they're called slay queens, please embrace it because guess what? They'll find another name. They'll just get bored and they'll find another name. Eh? And I don't want to be called here again to come and discuss that other name. Because <laughs> it doesn't, it, listen, it, it doesn't mean anything. Eh? Yeah, yeah. And uh, people will talk about you when they appreciate you because you're doing dope stuff. If you're a guy who used to be in a corner who does nothing, do the, uh, do the chick, no one will ever discuss you, no one will talk about you. Eh? Thank you so much, Dr. Ndemo, Dr. Ngumi, Shafi, and the audience as well. And it really boils down to, and I guess what you said, Dr. Ndemo, it's daily mini battles that we're fighting day in, day out. Uh, as much as we're trying to deal with these gender stereotypes that have been receding and bringing us back to what we've been fighting to get away from. So we need to fight and speak up on social media, on the kitchen table, in the salon. If it means you're in the audience and you have to be the one person standing up and booing, like Dr. Dr. Ndemo has said, be that person, but at least be vocal and speak up. Thanks for watching. Thank you to Sankara Hotel for hosting us. Let's keep the conversation going. That's what this show is all about we just get this conversation started you keep it going in your spaces in your locales and let's see the difference at least in our society thanks for watching have a wonderful night let's do this again next week